It's going to take everything to win this race. Government-sponsored, crime-fighting spy kids carrying on the legacy of their dead parents. Aided by talking transformer cars powered by highly sophisticated artificial intelligence with an adorable genetically engineered monkey bear sidekick. This is Speed Racer, Scooby-Doo, and Knight Rider in a blender on Liquify, poured over a bowl of cereal with 300% of your recommended daily sugar consumption, screaming down the track at 200 miles per hour. It's mask before mask was mask. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the history of pole position. Pole Position is a 13-episode animated series that originally aired Saturday mornings on the CBS television network in the United States from September to December of 1984. It is very loosely based on the hit arcade game Pole Position, released by Namco two years before in 1982. Dan, Tess, and Daisy Darrett are struggling to carry on after their parents were killed in an accident, but you wouldn't know it from all the fun they're having. Or maybe that appearance of fun, like everything else in their lives, hides something much more complex. See. After their parents were killed in the line of duty, all the Derrick kids have left in the world is each other and the Pole Position Stunt Show, an arena-based automobile stunt show that acts as a front for a U.S. government-sponsored crime-fighting operation led by their uncle, Dr. Zachary Derrick. It's just the three kids, the automobile stunt show slash crime-fighting organization, their uncle Zach, a one-of-a-kind genetically engineered monkey-raccoon hybrid named Kuma, and two intelligent cars named Wheels and Roadie. And when I say intelligent, I mean smart. The two cars are powered by portable command modules that look like small television sets. They display simple low-resolution graphics, allowing the two distinct artificially intelligent personalities the ability to emote with 8-bit faces. Wheels is a red car that bears a resemblance to a 1965 Ford Mustang and is generally driven by Tess. Rhodey is a sleek, futuristic, science fiction-inspired car generally driven by Dan. Both support the Derrick kids in their missions for the government and day-to-day -day functioning, everything from route mapping to assisted driving to family trauma counseling. Dan and Tess, as adults, are old enough to potentially be capable of dealing with their trauma. Daisy, on the other hand, is young enough to be considered an accident herself, and she's going to need a lot more help dealing with her parents' death in a healthier way than dressing up Rhodey and Wheels as her parents and pretending everything is fine. Which she does. And Rhodey, you're the daddy. And here's your hat. But family trauma is just a framing mechanism for all the hot automobile action. The cars, after all, are the stars of the show. Both Wheels and Rhodey are equipped with high-tech modifications, not the least of which is the ability to convert into hover vehicles. Uncle Zach designed the cars and maintains them as part of the stunt show with funds provided by you, the taxpayers. In fact, everything from the tractor trailer that the kids live in to the elaborate stunt track that the pole position show is performed on is federally subsidized. So it's only fair that the show will occasionally switch into a first-person point of view 8-bit mode, mimicking the look of the actual pole position arcade game, putting you in the driver's seat. Other than the name, it is the only connection between the show and the arcade game itself. Pole Position was produced by Deke Audio Visuals' Jean Chalapon and Andy Hayward. It was developed by Michael Reeves and Jean Chalapon. Deke had already produced shows like Inspector Gadget, The Littles, and Ulysses 31. Creating a cartoon based on an arcade game was a no-brainer. Because arcade games were hot and getting hotter, the release of Space Invaders in 1978 marked the beginning of what is now known as the golden age of video games. When Pac-Man arrived in 1980, it pushed the entire industry to a new level of licensing and multimedia branding. Saturday morning cartoons were the market for kids' eyeballs and kids liked video games. It was a straight line from the emerging cultural phenomenon that arcade games had become in and of themselves to developing those games into fully animated series, regardless of what their internal narratives were. Or weren't. In 1982, Hanna-Barbera brought Pac-Man to television with the Pac-Man cartoon. In 1983, Ruby Spears scooped up Frogger, Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., Cubert, Pitfall, and packaged them in a block of shorts called Saturday Supercade. If you were in the cartoon business, it was time to grab a license and get in the game. Pole position, a term which refers to the ideal placement at the start of the race, front row, inside track, was one of the most popular, most successful arcade games released in 1982. It was the most popular game of 1983. 
Pole Position The Game was created for Namco by Shinichiro Okamoto and Kazunori Sawano with an assist from Sho Osugi. It was built on lessons learned through the manufacture of electromechanical racing games like F1 in 1976. Pole Position gave buyers the flexibility of two different options for their space, a stand-up cabinet or a sit-in cockpit-style immersive experience. Both versions had a finely tuned gas pedal and steering wheel that was unrivaled in its precision and ability to mimic the feel of driving. Pole Position hit home systems like the Atari 2600 and 5200, Commodore 64, VIC-20, and ZX Spectrum, among others. It was the highest grossing game in North America, selling over 21,000 arcade machines worth $61 million that would then produce roughly $450 per week in continuing revenue. It was the first 16-bit arcade game and set the standard for what the racing genre would be well into the future, long after its time had passed, inspiring clones and copycats as well as official sequels of its own. Make Funtown your place to be every Sunday morning where you'll have tons of fun with Gerbert and friends. This is my fearless flying horse, Rory. You'll tag along with the fun bunch of the Get Along Gang. Here we go! Then catch the high speed action of pole position. Time for the big finale, Rody. And intercept the galactic adventures of Starcom. Funtown is all this and much more tomorrow morning, 8 to 11 Eastern, only on the Family Channel. Deke recognized the value of Pole Position for two reasons. One, it was already popular, so it came with built-in name recognition, and two, it didn't have a pre-existing narrative. It was just a racing game. You drive a car in a race against other cars. When the race is over, you do it again. Deke had total freedom to do whatever they wanted with the story and characters. All they had to do was license the name from Namco and get to work, which they did. The wheels and roadie cars were designed by Eric Heshong, while mechanical designs were done by Shinji Aramaki. Eric was a veteran animation artist who had worked on shows like Godzilla, Super Friends, Smurfs, Pac-Man, and Shirt Tales. Shinji Aramaki was coming off of Genesis Climber Mospita, one of the inspirations for Robotech, and would soon go on to Transformers and Mask, and then after that, Appleseed, Evangelion, and Ultraman, among others. And look, it's rare that a project is delivered exactly the way it was pitched. Michael Reeves says they started out with an ongoing plot structure that would have seen the Derrick kids trying to solve the mystery of their missing parents and their lives as counterintelligence professionals. Detective kids with spy parents. Consider that in 1984, as the world continued to embrace video games, there was a great pop culture convergence that saw secret agents like James Bond transforming robots and intelligent cars like Kit from Knight Rider find common ground in their shared motifs. Heck, Spy Hunter was released in 1983 and was supposed to be a James Bond game. John Chalapon and Michael Reeves worked on scripts, as did Roby Gorin, Mark Scott Zacree, and Chuck Lorre, who would later go on to produce shows like Big Bang Theory. Music came from the infamous duo Halm Saban and Shuki Levy. All this time I thought it was either Haim or Haim. Apparently it's Halm. Who knew? Ah, but writing the music is one thing, singing it is another. That's the voice of Nick Carr you've been hearing in your head for the last 40 years. Maybe you recognize him from the Mask theme song or Jason the Wheeled Warriors, both in 1985. In fact, Nick's got a whole library of music he's worked on that's been stuck in your head. From Macron 1 to Cops to Alvin and the Chipmunks, Power Rangers, Adventure Time, and SpongeBob Squared Pants. Despite its design and intention to be a vehicle to sell stuff to kids, we couldn't find any evidence that any toys whatsoever were produced related to the Deke animated series. Sure, the game was ported to dozens of home systems over the years, and even today, Super Impulse sells pocket-sized versions of the Pole Position arcade cabinet, but no Kuma the Mutant Monkey Raccoon plush doll or action figures. Parker Brothers released a board game, but that too was focused on the arcade game and not the characters from Deke. For whatever Deke was able to do with the concept of pole position beyond cars racing around a track, it began and ended with the Saturday morning cartoon itself. Pole Position would return to U.S. televisions in 1986 and then later in the 80s and 90s on the Family Channel and USA Cartoon Express. It aired in the U.K., Poland, France, and New Zealand. In 2008, Brightspark Productions released the series on a four-disc DVD set in the U.K. In April of 2012, Mill Creek Entertainment released 10 of the 13 episodes in a variety pack with episodes of Cops and Jason the Wheeled Warriors. And just six months later, they released an additional cartoon compilation set that had the remaining three episodes. Today, you can watch the whole series on the Wild Brain channel here on YouTube. 
Pole Position The Game had multiple sequels and lives on as one of the most important, most influential video games of all time, setting the standard for every racing game that would follow, with a version of the game showing up as recent as 2018 as an easter egg in the Tesla operating system, it has since been removed for failure to actually acquire the rights to the game. Not exactly a reboot, but Pole Position The Show would find a spiritual successor in the Mask cartoon a year later in 1985. Design, production, writing, music, mechanical design, Mask is nearly all the same people doing almost exactly the same thing. Mask, of course, centered around highly advanced transforming vehicles operated by a top secret group of crime fighters. It is the Pole Position concept expanded. More vehicles, more drivers, the same technology on both sides of the moral conflict. Pole Position with high-tech form-changing vehicles designed and operated by two crime-fighting brothers. One brother dies, his children and his brother continuing the fight in his honor. Mask with high-tech form-changing vehicles designed and operated by two brothers and Miles Mayhem. One brother dies, the other carries on his legacy in the fight against Miles Mayhem. The similarities don't end there. Matt Tracker, the leader of Mask, has a son named Scott whose birth parents are unknown. He may be adopted, they may be deceased. And it all wraps up in the second season, the final 10 episodes of the Mask vs. Venom story focused specifically on racing. Mask may be making its way back to center stage as part of the Hasbro Cinematic Universe. If it does, if there are games, if there are toys, if there are comic books and roleplay accessories, remember that it started with this show, these characters, and the best position on the track, the pole position. Good news, audio was recording the whole time. Thanks for watching, please hit like, hit subscribe. I think I've used that one before. <laughs> subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are, but I mean it every time. If you haven't heard, we started a second channel called Toy Galaxy 2, that's T-O-O. -O. Head over there and subscribe for stuff we don't post here. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy or become a YouTube channel member. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below. Have you played Pole Position? Did you watch Pole Position. Have you watched people play Pole Position? Do you play Pole Position so people can watch you? I think that covers all the variations. <laughs> right. Cut.